Have a seat. Hi. Oh, hi. All right, I'm going to ask you a question, but don't answer it. Ready? That's good. This glass of water, all right, you know what I'm going to say, right? Is it half empty or is it half full? Don't answer. Half empty or half full? We'll uh, tell some stories and then we'll come back to that question. In the old days, the old, old days, before there was Christianity, before Jesus was born, before there were even such thing as Israelites or Hebrew religion, people used to believe that the earth was little spots of land floating around in a big, big pool of water. Not just floating around side to side, but floating around all around. We were floating in a gigantic globe or universe of water, swimming, swimming in this water, and we were surrounded by it, and that's what everyone believed. Now, have you ever uh, tried to swim underwater? Uh-huh. And uh, it's not easy. If you haven't tried, don't. At least not without your parents' permission and the, your parents there to watch you. Why would you want your parents there to watch you? You might need help oh, to get out of the water in case you're what? Yeah, drowning. That's the problem with swimming underwater. It's drowning. And people used to believe, they used to think of the world as a situation where we were surrounded by all this water. And the water was a monster god that completely covered us. And so that any power we had to live in, any space we had to live in, that was a creation of our god. And so our book of stories, we have a big book of stories. We read, we read three of them already today. What's that book called? Exactly, the Bible. And that book contains lots and lots of stories about water being chaos, water being our enemy, water being what surrounds us and potentially will hurt us if we're not saved, if we're not pulled out. What's a story that can, that's, uh, has to do with water surrounding us? Any story that you can think of in the Bible that has uh, water in it? Well, how about creation in the first place, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was just a formless void on the deep, right? Or what about, um, who's that guy with the big ship? Noah, right? And what was the problem there? Lots and lots of water. Yeah, surrounded by water and everybody perished except for Noah. What about Moses? What happened to him? How did they escape from Israel? Well, they ran through the water, and then the water closed up and saved them. Right? And today, we heard a story about Jesus walking on the water and saving Peter from the water. So these stories are very, very deep in our, in our minds, very deep in our hearts. There's something about this water idea. If you've ever tried and had trouble breathing because you were underwater or because you were under too many brothers and sisters, maybe, or under too many pillows, or maybe you were sick at the time. It's painful and it's extremely scary to try and breathe like that. And then when you can breathe again, oh, it's so joyful and wonderful, such a feeling to be able to breathe again. Everybody, every human being understands this feeling coming out from under the water. So, our people, people from time beyond measure, have said, okay, we understand this story. Why don't we make other stories about it and use the water as an idea? And so, when we're saved, we can be drowning not just in actual water, but we can be drowning Elijah. We heard a, a story of Elijah this morning. He wasn't drowning in water. He was drowning in fear of his enemies, of all the people that were coming to get him, all the problems that he was having, and the storms, the fires, the earthquakes. He was drowning in them, and what did he do? He stopped, and he listened to God, who saved him out of that drowning. Jesus himself, what, what ended up happening to Jesus at the end of his worldly life? Do you remember? Surrounded by enemies drowning in an ocean of enemies, 
And yet the awesome power of God allowed him to live again. These are the images. Today we're doing full tummies ministry. Now, the ministry is such that we bring lots and lots of food and we give it to people who can't buy enough food for themselves. So our hands are the saving hands of God helping to pull people out. And what's the ocean in this story? The ocean is hunger. They're drowning in an ocean of hunger, and we help to save them. So this story about Jesus walking on the water, it's a great image, right? It's impossible to walk on water, and that's what's so wild about the story is that it's impossible. Jesus does the impossible, and it gets us ready for he does the impossible by coming back from being dead. But it's not just a story about Jesus be making himself really light all of a sudden, so he's like a bug that he walk on water, or making the water very thick so that it's thick enough so he can walk on it. What the story really is about, maybe, is about Peter. Because Peter sees Jesus doing this and says, ask me to do that too, please. And he goes out, he's overcomes all his fears of taking this incredible risk of drowning, which we all know about, he hops out of the boat. Okay, he thinks he's going to drown for a second, but Jesus takes his hand and holds him up. Jesus even teases him. Oh, you have little faith. Well, of course he's teasing him because the, the other disciples sitting in the boat, they didn't even try to get out. They didn't even ask about getting out or taking that risk. Jesus is proud of Peter, even though he teases him, because at least he's taking the risk. And sure enough, sure enough, Jesus pulls him out of that soup, doesn't he? So in a minute, we're going to see another little play about water, and there won't be any drowning. We're going to see this very attractive infant over here, Peyton, be baptized by Julie. And it's a little play about water and about the saving grace of coming out of the water. Some places, some traditions, they do what's called full immersion. They take them and stick them all the way under wa underwater and then pull them out. And it's very dramatic where they take them down to the river and put them in the water and drag them out, sputtering and coughing and saved from the water. We get the same effect with a lot less water here. And it's okay. I haven't heard any complaints. The play is about Jesus giving us, God giving us the gift of salvation, and the image is coming up out of that water. So when you watch, watch Peyton being baptized, think of that. Think that she is saved for a life of grace. All right, let's get back to this glass here. What's your answer? Is the glass half full or half empty? Are we being drowned every day or are we being saved? every day. Do we have to hurt every day or do we have permission and the help we need to save each other? What's the answer? Well, it depends on your point of view, right? What are we going to say? It's hard to say, isn't it? It just depends on your point of view. And your point of view can change in a minute. So when you think it's half empty, Call upon the saving grace of God and suddenly it'll be half full again. All right?